Hi there, and welcome to part 5 of the CardCAD tutorial. In this tutorial, we will be associating components with PCB footprints. Now, I just want to correct, at the end of the last uh, tutorial, I was getting a bit annoyed with the electrical rules checking. Um, I managed to find out what the problem was. First of all, just one extra thing. In the schematic, remember we had that non-polarized capacitor? Well, I found out that this capacitor symbol, that's um, the positive side. So I've replaced it with a electrolytic capacitor symbol and also put a value in there of 22 UF. I've never seen that symbol anywhere else, but apparently it is a legitimate symbol. Normally I've seen the one that has a little curve on the bottom. Anyway, so now if I run the electrical rules check... Uh, Now, if I run the electrical rules check, there's no errors. And let me, let me show you what it was. Just let me disconnect this a sec and run it again. Do you remember we had this um, this error? Pin connected to some other pins, but no pin to drive it. Power in of component U2 is not driven. Now, this was dri driving me nuts because it was connected to VCC. Now, it turns out that what you're supposed to do whenever you have a net like VCC or ground you have to somewhere once on the schematic indicate that they are power or where the power is coming from in our case it's coming from the connector you could actually put that anywhere but it's best to put it very close to where the connector is so you you indicate that both the ground that symbol and VCC the ground symbol are both power and then you won't get any electrical rules problems when you connect them up but so what was the problem here? We were connected via this junction to VCC through this passive. Well, it turns out, connecting power through a passive, special use of power flag, if you do that, you have to use, you have to add in an extra power, power flag. Because it doesn't know, KiCad, because it doesn't know anything about, the, about electronics, really, it just is checking net names, and it's effectively checking well, we know what it's checking, these options, whether or not an output pin is connected to an output pin, if it's so generate an error, and various other things. Now, but even when they were all green, it was still generating an error. This is because there's a special condition where it was seeing this connected to a passive, and it doesn't know what that passive is. So it doesn't really know if that is going to be producing connected to VCC or not. That might be a million ohm resistor, right? and that which would mean there's no power there so just as a special thing you have to then explicitly say put a power flag there and say this there is a power input here trust me and you've got to put it on there as well because we had a resistor there a passive in the way between vcc if that was correctly collect connected directly to vcc we would not have to do that so now that that's connected and i run the drc there we go okay so now that the schematic is done the next step is to associate each of these footprints with each of these components with footprints. So what we have to do is we have to first of all generate a net list. In the default format, we just click generate. I've already generated it once because I was checking something out, but we save it and then that will just export all of these um, components and connections and so on to a file format that can be understood by CVPCB. Now when we run CVPCB, we will get a list of all the all the things. Now sorry, I was getting a bit confused cuz in my head I was imagining where these libraries are cuz I actually set set mine up so that it gets these from GitHub. But in any case, Let's look at the, the CVPCB layout. On the left here, we've got all of the libraries that we've got access to. And if you edit the library table, you see see that they're all in here. Now, these are footprint libraries. So say we wanted to view this footprint, for example, you can see what it looks like. Um, for example, what would a seven segment display 
what would a buzzer footprint look like? We can click on that and view that footprint. And what we have to do then, so we've got all on the left hand side, there are all the different footprint libraries. And in the middle are all of our components. So all of our components, for example, U2, there will be listed somewhere. U2, 555. And there's nothing over here at the moment for any of the components. They're not associated with anything. Now, the, so what we want to do is associate every single one of these components with a footprint. Now, so how to do that? There's, there's, by the way, there's three filters up here, which you might get caught off guard with if one of them is accidentally selected. You can filter a footprint by library and only show the one that's selected. You can filter by number of pins or by keywords. So say we were to, we were to do it by number of pins. These are all the footprints that have two pins. Because, you know, we might have an SMD capacitor that still would fit that. We could have that as a footprint on our PCB. We could even have like a pin array that would also have a pin header, would still have two pins. If we wanted, we could put a pin header on our PCB and then stick the capacitor in there. We're not going to. What we want is a through hole resistor. Now, I've never actually selected a through hole resistor, so just let me find it. Right, let's start with something easier with the LEDs. We don't want a through hole resistor for a capacitor. I'm going insane. So for a LED, it's again it's two two hole, but we should probably try and filter by keyword. Where do we enter the keyword? Yeah, LED. Are we going to use five mil or three mil LEDs? I don't know. It depends what you want on there. Let's put. Let's assume it's going to be five mil LEDs. So I just double click on that, and now all of these diodes, diodes one to diode eight, which are all of our LEDs, according to see D D eight, D seven, D six, and so on. And now associated with those. Now this was our header, and this is where we were going to connect power. So we might have some kind of battery connector in there. But for now, let's just use a pin header, straight pin header. And later on, we're going to, we'll, in one of the other tutorials, we're going to create a footprint for a battery connector, let's say. So, but at the moment, we'll just use a pin, pin connector. Now our transistors, they are TO92 packages. Normally, that's kind of a normal type of resistor you would get. You know, the one that you just get from a hobbyist store or something. Now, and what we can see is actually there's different, there's a, quite a lot of different um, TO98 packages. And if I load one, depending on where the pins are. So I know that ours is actually like that. Um, with the, I normally put it the other way around, but you know, if you were to rotate this round, then um, the collector at the top, and then the base, and, and the emitter at the bottom, with this curve to the over to the left. But that's, that's effectively what ours is like. And that should be, you sometimes get smaller ones, you sometimes get narrower ones. So you need to know what your transistors are, uh, which transistors you actually have. Like, I mean, in a way it doesn't really matter because it's got very long pins transistor. You can probably just put it through pretty much any footprint with three holes. Mine are in line actually on my transistors. So and they're actually very I know that they're they know that they're quite narrow. But that'll do. I mean I can have a look actually if I zoom in on this, I can kind of have a look what what this is. At the bottom here, you can see the y coordinates and the x coordinates. And um I can see that it's on one point two seven mil per per division. Now, if I set that to say one, right, then I can see that by looking at dy at the bottom, this is actually 0 0.1 inches. Why is it in inches? It's 0 0.1 inches away. 
which is a point so that means it's just actually the dot pitch is point 1 which is the sort of standard dot pitch on a so on a through hole board or a breadboard or something like that so that's probably okay on my particular transistors they will they'll stick through that but they won't be flush with the surface so i would need mine to be a little bit narrower than that so is there a narrow one oval so an oval one yeah 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 so that how narrow is that that sort of that's about half the width so i'm gonna have those because i think my transistors will fit perfectly on there but this is where you'd have to find out about the transistors you've bought and buy the right select the right footprint so i will go for that and i will go for ebc for my transistors the resistors let's have a look at this I'm just trying to work out what the spacing is. Uh, that's we need quite large pads for the resistors. Probably, yeah. Okay, so that's about 0.3 of an inch apart for the pads. So 0.3 of an inch apart. I'm just going to grab a ruler that's near me to just have a look at this. So this is what you'll need to do. So 0.3 of an inch, yeah, that's quite, my, the resistor will probably fit in there, just about. Uh, but looking at it, actually, if I look at um, the, the R4, oh, okay, <laughs> so the, that's actually the spacing. So R4 means 0.4 of a, an inch spacing. So you can either have 0.4 of an inch, that's the normal one, or you can have larger pads, like if you prefer soldering with larger pads. It's difficult to tell how big these pads are, or how big the holes are, just by looking at it. If you open this up in the editor, you'll be able to have a look what the um, how big the hole is, and then you know if you've got depending on whether you've got thick or thin wires on your transistors, you choose one with a bigger or smaller hole. I'm going to use this R4 with large pads. No, actually, the standard R4 for the for the resistors. So this has a 4.4 inch separation between the pads, and you know you can see that just by looking at this um, DX value it's zero at the moment, and then as I move across to the pad, it goes to 0.2 and it's minus 0.2 that way. So there is a 0.4 separation between the pads, and by look using my ruler and looking at a resistor, I can see that a 0.4 separation you know it's almost half an inch will be enough for me to solder those through hole components so i'm going to assign those to it to all the resistors and there is a hell of a lot of resistors in here in fact our our pcb is just going to end up covered in resistors okay um so the capacitor I need to know what the package for the capacitor is. Again, this is a pin spacing, presumably, that they've put in front of this designator. CP4. Yeah, all right, fair enough. But our capacitor won't look like that because it's a. Uh, I'm using one with a in kind of a tin tin configuration. You know, the sort of sta normal stand-up capacitor. So, what do I need for that? Let's have a look. Okay, what I've done is changed the filter up here to list by library and gone to capacitors through hole because for some reason listing by keywords, um, they, those through hole ones didn't show up. Now looking at these through hole ones, if I look at the, the footprint for that, for example, that's five by six mil. And um, oh, yeah, point 0.1 of an inch is about five mil. Now I need to then measure the capacitor that I'm using. And that's what you would have to do as well. But I have a different capacitor, 4 by 2.5 mil. So that means that the spacing between the pins, I think, is what they're saying there, should be 2.5 mil. 
Right, so what I've actually done is measured it. So of course what we're talking about is this capacitor here. And by looking at the measurements, it seems to be five mil with a two and a half mil um, spacing. Oh, okay, so then that's, that's the height, and the height of it is 11 mil. So I believe it should be this one. If I just have a quick look, the spacing there is, yeah, is about five. Should be about two and a half mil. That is two and a half mil spacing. So that is the footprint I want for the capacitor. Now the only thing left is the switch. What we will do actually is create a footprint for the switch, I think. Um, yeah, we'll just create a footprint for the switch. So because we've got to do, we've got to create some footprints in the tutorial anyway. But for now, let's just make the switch a pin array. So what do we got? Uh, pin headers. Yeah, pin header will do. A straight pin header, two by one, which just looks like that, right? You know, we'll we'll just connect that up with wires at the moment. So, just for now, just so we can get on with the the next step. Now there's just two elements left. We've got a five nine five shift register. Now, what format does that come in? So if I go to eBay, for example, and I wanted to buy a 595 shift register, probably find a bunch of them. And this is in, I can see that this is actually in uh, DIP16 package. That's the one, because we're using all through hole in this case. So if I look at, um, I've got to find a dip 16 package in the library. So sockets dip filter by library and then we've got a dip 600 16 300. So 300 is actually the diameter. And I happen to know that that is a 300 diameter um, dip. Now the 555 is an 8 pin dip. And so there we go. 8 pin dip 300 wide. So now everything is assigned a footprint. So we save, save this, and it's funny because when you save this, this actually generates a footprint link file, a CMP file. If I actually have a look in the um, Christmas bauble, where is it? Okay, forget that. <laughs> That creates a CMP file. So that's now the footprints are associated. So we're ready now to import those into the PCB editor, PCB new, and start laying them out. Because we've got associations for every single component there. So that's saved, and that's the end of this tutorial.